Every year, GCHQ releases a code-breaking challenge. Now, it's aimed at testing our problem-solving skills. And this year's challenge is aimed at children who are aged from 11 to 18. It features a variety of puzzles, including code-breaking and maths. Hello, my name's Anne Keys Butler, and I'm the director of GCHQ. And today, it's a real privilege to set you a very special festive challenge with our Christmas card. Lateral thinking. They're looking out for who can like think outside the box. Ingenuity. Interesting, because it's not just like a normal maths question, it's like different. And perseverance. Quite difficult, but I think we can all do it. All are being tested here. We've been granted rare access to the Manchester base of GCHQ the UK's Intelligence, Security and Cyber Agency. Since 2015, it's included a brain teaser on its Christmas cards. And for the third year running, it's also set a festive, mind-bending challenge for school pupils. So how are you finding it? Very difficult. As well as students from Sale High School, also having a go is 100-year-old Betty Webb. Scarborough, serious and sticky. Betty worked at Bletchley Park during World War II as part of the top secret team that cracked Nazi codes. It took a certain type of brain to deal with it, bearing in mind that all the messages were in uh, groups of five letters or five figures. It changed the course of history. Didn't Absolutely, it? yes. Um, we don't know exactly how much it shortened the war, but clearly it was two to three years. And these clocks show a four-letter word. Can you work it out? Yes, this could well be a, a letter cipher. Whoa, big clue from Betty. That's when numbers relate to the position of a letter in the alphabet. What breaks but cannot fall, can leap but never crawl, can be seized but never gripped, often present, never skipped. Quite cryptic, isn't it? Maybe if I get a strong gin and tonic, perhaps I'll have to work something out. <laughs> Is that the key to cracking a code, a strong gin and tonic? Uh, pass. <laughs> you have five minutes to go. Five minutes. When it comes to recruitment, GCHQ has been widening the net. For example, it's keen for neurodiverse candidates to apply for jobs. So people with conditions such as autism, ADHD or dyslexia. It believes different ways of thinking are key to keeping the UK safe. Foreign language skills are also highly valued. One of the questions we do get asked a lot in school is, you know, why do I need to learn a language? Um, so this just really promotes the, the need for languages in, in a, a global community that we live in and just the cognitive skills it brings with them as well. Betty's ability to speak German was key to her posting at Bletchley Park. Of course, we weren't allowed to talk about anything we were doing. For me, it was an opportunity to meet people I would otherwise not have met because I hadn't been to university or anything like that. You must feel very proud that you were there. In oh, absolutely, way. yes. I mean, chance in a million, really. I always used to do the code work in, in, in the Telegraph. I haven't done it lately. I'm too busy. OK, everyone, your time is up. How was it? When you first look at it, it's quite, like, daunting because you have no idea what all these things are, but then... After working quite a few of them out, it gets easier. So I think it's interesting to see the type of work that GCHQ employees have to do every day. It looks really fun to like work with this type of stuff. And it doesn't look like as boring as some other jobs could be. Think differently, stick with it, and what seems like mission impossible can become mission accomplished. Tim Muffett, BBC News.